about what they seem. You can't always believe your own eyes. <laughs> In today's Big Bang, the Big Bang magic show with mysterious tricks to thrill and amaze. Well, I should be scaring myself silly as I go ghost busting to reveal the truth behind some famous ghost stories. And I'll be investigating the strange but true story of a UFO sighting. But first, let us enter the realm of the imagination where just about anything is possible. Actually, there's no mystery to this at all. Like all mysteries, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. It's all got to do with the material that a balloon is made out of. Ooh! Now, the rubber that a balloon's made of, when it's stretched, will tear very easily if it's pricked. Can you just do that for me, Kate? See how easy it tears? So the trick is to stop the balloon from tearing. And the way to do that is to use a little bit of sellotape. Like so. The sellotape won't tear, and so you should be able to stick your knitting needle right into the balloon without it exploding. So, no big bang. Very clever. Now, I've got a trick for you. I'm going to make this ball roll uphill. Impossible. Gravity says that things roll downhill. Well, at the end of the programme, I'm going to defy the laws of gravity. certain rules in the universe. If you drop a piece of toast, it'll always land jam side down. And it's always your favourite pair of jeans that get oil on them. And if you want to balance something, then you do it like this, in the middle. OK, so let's try and balance this rather beautiful bird. How about that? I promise you there are no strings attached. There's no magic of television here. Is it a freak of nature? Are there supernatural forces involved? No, nope. it's just a good balancing act. And I'll show you how to make a Big Bang balancing bird. You'll need a large plain sheet of paper, which you fold in half. Now, down the centre line, you start to draw the outline of your bird, starting with the beak. And when you draw the wings, make sure that the wings actually reach further forward than that beak. Bring your wing right round, leave a little thick bit for the body and take it right down to the tail. Now, cut that out until you have something that looks like this and open that up and you will have a perfectly balanced bird from left to right. But you're not going to use this. This is too floppy. It's got a crease down the middle. This is a template. So you lay that on a piece of thick card, draw around it until you've got a thick balancing bird card like this. Now, you'll then need to put a hole in the beak and bend it up and pass a little piece of elastic through like this and a little bit of sellotape to hold that in position. But your bird still won't balance. The only way you're going to make it balance is with money. Not a lot of money, just a little bit. A couple of 2P pieces I find work very well. Now, the idea is that you need to put these 2P pieces right at the very tips of the wings and a bit more sellotape to hold it in position like that. Most of the weight of the bird is at the tail and the two P pieces bring that weight nearer the central balancing point. OK, let's have a go at balancing my bird. 
And how about that? You may find that it doesn't balance perfectly. First of all, you may have to trim the tail. But now, my bird's beautiful tail is balanced by its weighty wings. Today's strange but true story took place on the evening of the 6th of January 1995 in restricted airspace 4,000 feet above Manchester Airport. Speedbird 5061 Tower, good evening. As the two pilots prepared for landing, they saw a large, brightly lit, wedge-shaped aircraft. It moved at very high speed and came so close that the co-pilot shielded himself against a collision. When there's a near miss, the pilots have to make a report and the incident is investigated. The Civil Aviation Authority were called in to study the evidence. The strange craft had been seen before in England, America and Belgium. It became known as the Silent Vulcan. One sighting forced the Belgian Air Force to scramble two F-16 fighter jets. They tracked the craft on radar and the data they collected suggested it was accelerating so fast that no human pilots could have withstood the G-forces. So, can we explain the silent Vulcan? There are billions upon billions of galaxies in the universe, and each galaxy may contain billions of planets, so the chances are one or more of those will support life. There may be civilizations older and more advanced than our own, but would a space traveler find us? Planet Earth is tiny and remote, tucked away in a small corner of an insignificant solar system in one galaxy among millions. Earlier this year, the authorities completed their investigation into the sighting at Manchester Airport. They concluded the cause of the incident was unassessable. They could not identify the strange craft. So the mystery of the near miss on flight 5061 remains unsolved. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the strange and unusual world of Gareth Jones. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are many things in this universe that we do not understand. But tonight, let me lift that veil of secrecy and share with you some of my knowledge. May I have a volunteer from the audience, please? Gareth, I'm the only one here. Madam, thank you for volunteering. Madam, I want you to think of a number between two and nine, but do not tell me. Between? Two and nine. Okay, done that. Now I want you to multiply that number by nine. You are now left with a large number. I want you to add the two digits of that number together. Say you had 45 and add the four to the five, okay? Okay. Uh, I mean, okay. Yep, done that. Now, I want you to take away from the number you have left, the number four. You are left with a single number. I want you to count through the alphabet, starting at A, until you arrive at the letter which corresponds with that number. OK, madam, I want you to think of a large animal starting with that letter. Concentrate now. I want you to concentrate on the color of that animal. Keep concentrating. Please concentrate harder. Yes, I can see the animal. Tell me, madam, can you imagine a large gray elephant? Am I correct, madam? Yes, you are. Thank you, I am correct. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, it's a trick, of course. If you multiply any number between two and nine by nine, and then add those two digits together, you will always get nine. So when I ask you to take four away, you'll always be left with five. The fifth letter in the alphabet is always going to be E. Think of a large animal that starts with an E, and <laughs> there is only really the elephant. And elephants are always grey. So I'm always going to get the same answer. This is the city of York, the most haunted city in Europe. The ancient buildings, churches and walls each have their own story of a ghost, spirit or something ghoulish. My ghost hunt starts here at uh, King's Manor. It was originally built in the 13th century as a home for the Abbot of St Mary's. It claims to be the most haunted place in York. 
and boasts five separate ghost stories. It was here that a group of roundhead soldiers were killed in battle on Trinity Sunday in 1644. Some people claim you can still hear their dying groans echoing around the walls. So how could this happen? One possible non-spooky explanation involves this stuff, stone or rock. The stone tapes theory suggests that stone walls might be able to record some kind of energy given off by human beings. This wall could be recording my actions right now. In the 16th century, Thomas Wentworth lost his head. He was executed here, and his ghost has been seen on these stairs. But maybe the people who saw his ghost were actually remembering something which happened a long time ago. There's a theory which suggests that you may inherit memories much in the same way that you inherit eye or hair colour from your parents. Ghosts may be no more than the memories of your great, 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 great grandparents. York City Wall. A curious figure is said to haunt this place, changing form as he walks. But where does he come from? A parallel universe? Or maybe there are transient holes in the fabric of space-time. After all, the universe is a very strange place. There are many people looking for answers to these ghost stories. They've monitored everything from changes in temperature to fluctuations in magnetic field. But so far, nothing conclusive. There is one final explanation. There is no such thing as ghosts. All these visitations and strange occurrences could be just the product of some very active imaginations. But here's a final ghost story for you. Margaret Clitheroe was a Catholic martyr who died a cruel death in the mid-16th century. But to celebrate her brave life, York City Council bought a house and turned it into a shrine. There have been over 300 claims of spooky presences in this house and it's been checked out by any number of psychics, mediums and ghost hunters. But all these supernatural presences are a bit odd because the Big Bang has found out that Margaret didn't live in this house at all. No, she lived over there at number 10. Gareth, some of those places looked seriously spooky. I didn't actually see any ghosts while I was there, but you're right, it was a very creepy place to be. Well, that's it for this week. Just time for me to defy the law of gravity and make that ball roll uphill, OK? Now, this end of the ramp is higher than the end where the ball is. If I just move these rods, the ball should roll uphill towards me. How's that working? Well, in fact, it's a trick. Of course, the ball is rolling downhill as I pull the rods apart. The ball tries to roll down between them, but that makes it roll towards me and seems to go uphill. Can I have a go? Yeah. I've turned it into a game as well. Um, cut holes here and put scores against it so you can see how well you're getting on. Come on. Ten. <laughs> see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>